Let's briefly talk about this mechanical fitting. These were really popular because they had pre-charged line sets. So the idea was your refrigerant lines that you ran had its own refrigerant charge. There would be a little piece of thin metal right here and it held all the refrigerant. So from the factory, they would pull a vacuum on this and they would charge the exact amount of refrigerant you needed. In the AC equipment, they also had another piece of metal covering this and it held all the refrigerant in. And you had the same thing with the evaporator. So the evaporator would have another piece and the evaporator is already charged with refrigerant. And when you put these pieces together, they would puncture each other. And when you punctured each other, they allowed the refrigerant to flow through there. These are notorious for failing for a few reasons. One of those reasons, right inside of here, there's a little rubber O-ring. And that rubber O-ring is notorious for failing, cracking, etc. So that rubber O-ring would fail, especially if you get acids in the system, or even if you're changing from different types of refrigerants, because different refrigerants affect, or the oils from the different refrigerants affect these O-rings and differently. And sometimes they would cause them to swell up, crack, or fail. So the O-ring is a big thing, but the other thing was people wouldn't tighten them up correctly, or they would also end up with situations where just the vibrations would cause them to come loose. Especially with some of the commercial jobs I've seen, some of the specialty restaurant equipment, they'll try to use these, and it's the first place I go to look for leaks is these connections right here. Let's take a little bit closer look at how that works. Here you can see the sacrificial metal. This is the metal, it's very thin, and this is the metal that's punctured. I can bend it really easy, it's just a, just a copper piece. Just a copper thin piece of metal, and it's just pressed up against the sides right here. Here's another example before I moved it around. You can see it's kind of in a bit of an arrow shape. So this was fully covered and there's a piece that cut that and then at the same time it also pushed it to the side, which is pretty smart. Here's the other end. So in this end, you can see that X pattern inside of there. Well, that is what did the cutting action. And you can see it's not just flat. If we turn it, there's a little bit of a cone shape right inside of here. So this had a piece of metal over it as well. When we put the two pieces together, the cone shape would cut through both pieces of metal. And how they designed both of these ends would allow it to push back on itself. Then we have this piece would slide up firmly against where the O-ring is here. This piece here would slide firmly up inside of this where that O-ring is. And that would make a good part of the seal. Then also, we had this mechanical fitting here where these are grooved just right and this piece was grooved very similar and it made a good strong seal. When it was done right and assuming that you had proper refrigerant and the oils and no acids etc. Let's take a look at the liquid line of how that mechanical fitting would look. So here's with the cover. So if we turn it this way this is what we're looking at. So this is that cover piece. And here you can see how the cover is holding it here on these two edges. It's gripping and it's keeping this end shoved all the way up inside. So that's what this piece is doing. Now there's a, another spot here to put your wrench. And the idea was that you put a backup wrench on here when you were tightening these up. Because if you just simply spun this, the whole copper would twist on you. So we had a backup wrench and then we had our connection here. And this is what would pull. This is what tightened it all together. Here you can kind of see how the metal is curved back on itself. Well, originally it was a flat piece of metal and when these two pieces push in, it broke the metal and gave it a place to go. And the other side did the same thing. It pushed and rolled back the other direction. So that's what punctured the refrigerant lines. Then right here, it got cut off. It fell off when we were uh, cutting this open. But right here, you see the groove, that's where the rubber O-ring would be all the way around. That's what helps seal these two pieces together. Well, you can see the same thing again the same nut, everything that's on there. Let's take this connection apart so we can see all of what's happening. So here you can see how this piece here is the same piece here and it has these little grooves on it. What's cool because they've engineered these grooves to grab right here at this groove. So these two pieces fit in like so. Then as you threaded this together, it pulled, it pulled these two pieces in and then it caused it to puncture it. If we take another look at this inside, here you can see where this is a different type of metal. This is a sacrificial metal. This was originally all the way across here. And here you can see how that metal is bent back on it. So as it, as this piece came in and it punctured that, it punctured it and not only punctured it, but also pushed it in. 
This piece also has its own piece of metal and it's pushed down as well. But this piece of sacrificial metal is what held the refrigerant on this side. So both were sealed and then as we go to put these two pieces together, it broke both sides and allowed the refrigerant to flow. Then we had the cap that tightened it in and it held it all together. So it's pretty neat how the concept works. Uh, notorious for leaking. I'm always le leak check these first. We uh, originally I saw these on manufactured homes where they didn't want to pay an air conditioning guy. They'd have the home people put it in and they would just connect the lines. But I've also seen them on many other applications since then. Um, there are some other issues if your refrigerant lines are not long enough or if the refrigerant lines are too long. There's some other variables about it. But the idea was it took a lot of the pressure off the technician. By having these, they could be fully dehydrated, the proper vacuum at the factory. They had the exact amount of refrigerant at the factory. So all you had to do was simply thread these connections together, the liquid line and the suction line outside and the liquid line and the suction line side inside. And there was no need to pull a vacuum, no need to adjust superheat or subcooling. It was all charged from the factory. So for what it's worth, that's a different type of mechanical fitting that you may run into. So now you understand what's happening with it. I have before seen people that tried to braze this and that just makes a bigger mess. If you have this and that rubber O-ring is dead, the best thing that I've found is to cut this completely out like I did here and put a straight piece of copper through there. So trying to braze over this, there's too many fail points, too many possibilities of having a leak. I've seen people try to do that and it just makes a really ugly mess that I end up having to cut out later anyways. But this is a mechanical fitting. I don't know the name of this fitting. If you know the name of it, please leave it in the comments. Thank you.